Good morning, good afternoon everyone, and welcome to this Unity tutorial on how to animate your player character quickly using Mixamo. In this episode, we're gonna see how we can use Mixamo animations and Unity rigid bodies to quickly set up a basic hero avatar with some controls to go left or right and to jump, side-scroller style. Are you ready? Then let's dive in. In this tutorial, I'm gonna program a very simple player controller that can be idle, run around left and right, or jump. To do this, we're gonna use Unity's animator component and some resources from Adobe Mixamo. Mixamo is an online platform where you can download rigged characters, poses, and animations for free. So even if you don't have your own 3D model, you can easily download any anim with one of the built-in avatars, like this red one that I'll use here. The lib is pretty comprehensive, it has a lot of various actions and movements, with a focus on video games projects. Just browse the list and you'll find animes of a biped standing, walking, running, jumping, or attacking. Note that from what I've seen, it doesn't have animals and quadrupeds yet. But anyway, in our case, we want to make a basic hero using this red Xbot model. So first, to be able to download resources from the website, make sure that you are logged in with either a Mixamo account or other usual providers like Google. Once you are signed in, you'll get access to all the resources and you'll be able to browse or directly search for something. Here I'll go ahead and download three animations. An idle stance, a running animation and finally a jumping animation. Because all models are rigged with the same standard, you can apply any animation on your current model, so you don't need to stick with the ones that show this specific model in the preview. Also, after you've picked an animation, you can click and drag the 3D view on the right to orbit around the model, and you can zoom in and out. Some animations also move the root of the model, because they imply some larger movements. If you don't want this overall translation, you can check the in-place box on the right, to constrain the animation to only the non-root bones. So for each of these animations, I'll just click the download button and keep the default export options. I want to use Mixamo's avatar in Unity, which means I have to make sure I do export the animation with the skin. You can also select various FBX formats if you want, but the default is just fine for Unity. Okay, now I have three FBX files on my computer. To import them in my Unity project, I can just drag them anywhere in the Assets folder or subdirectory. And now that we have our animations with an embedded model, we can easily drag any of our three assets in an empty scene, and we directly get our nice export. But we need to set up some import settings for these FBX files. That's so that Unity can properly extract all the required data from them, because at the moment it's not possible to play any of our animations. When you select one of the Mixamo imported assets, you'll see that the inspector opens a special import window with four tabs. Model, Rig, Animation and Materials. This is the FBX importer window. The first tab is for choosing specific subparts to exclude from the import, or to convert between various bases by changing the axis and the units. Here, we only need to change one thing, that is to bake the axis, because Mixamo models are designed with game engines like Unity in mind, so they're configured to match most of the defaults. In the second tab, the rig, we need to change the import parameters to create an avatar for our model. So in the avatar definition dropdown, select the create from this model option. Now, the idea is that in Unity, the animation of a humanoid character relies on the definition of an avatar. This asset is used to match the bones in your character's skeleton with the animation keys and curves. As explained in the docs, you need to reconcile the bone structure of the model to its animation. And so you basically need something to do a remapping of the bones stored in the FBX file with a Unity humanoid avatar. Oh, and also, once you've changed the settings, don't forget to hit apply at the bottom to actually keep your settings. In the third tab, the animation, we can preview the animation on our model and check its settings. 
The input is fine overall, although we can rename the clip to give it a more meaningful name, and we need to make sure that the idle and run animation loop by checking the loop time option. Again, remember to apply the settings at the bottom when you're done. Finally, the materials tab lets us choose how we want the materials to be assigned on our models. For now, they're automatically created and loaded from the FBX file. You can find them inside your imported asset, as subassets. But if you want, you can also replace them with your own Unity materials. Here, I'll just stick with the default config. Don't forget to apply the same settings on your two other Mixamo assets. For the other rigs, however, we don't need to create new avatars. Instead, we can simply copy the first one we created by passing in the avatar sub-asset in this slot. Okay, so at that point, our export is ready to be scripted and animated. So first, let's prepare all the different animations it will use, along with some useful parameters, thanks to Unity's animator component. This component allows Unity to apply a specific animation to your model, using its avatar. And if you take a look at your instantiated Mixamo asset, you can see that one animator component was automatically added to it. That happened when we updated our rig config and asked to create an avatar from this model. But if we want to control which animation the animator uses, we need to create another asset, an animator controller. Basically, this component lets you arrange and link various animations together using a state machine. Each animation clip is referenced by Unity as a state, and you can then design sort of a flowchart with the different animation transitions from one clip to another. To link the new animator controller to the animator, just drag it into the dedicated spot in the inspector. Now we need to open the animator window to inspect this animator controller more closely. To do this, just go to the menu bar, then window, animation and animator. And so here we can see the state machine of our basic model. For now, it's empty because we haven't added any animation to it. To add states, or in other words animations, we simply have to open the Mixamo imported assets and click and drag the animation clip that are inside each to our animator window. Let's try and add our idle animation first. As soon as you drop it into the window, it gets added to the state machine and linked to the entry point. The block is shown in orange, which means it will be the default state for the state machine. So if you try and play a scene, you see that the export switches to this animation and plays it again and again. Remember, we set it to loop earlier. If you want, you can even take this animator window on the side and examine the state machine while it runs. The blue progress bar indicates the state that is currently playing, and so we see it just loops infinitely for now. To add the other states, just open the other assets and drag the animation clips to the animator window. You see that it directly creates new blocks, i.e. new states in our state machine, with the associated animation. Those states are shown in grey, which means they are not default states. And so the next step is to create transitions between all of these states so that our avatar can actually use the other animations. Don't forget that for now it is stuck in its initial idle state. To create a transition, all you need to do is right-click a block and then click on the target state. This will create an arrow between the two that you can select to further configure the transition conditions and settings. So first, a really cool thing with Unity's animator is that it can blend between the animations to make smoother transitions. This is controlled via the transition time. By tweaking this value, you see that the animations overlap more or less, and that you control the time it takes for the model to go from one pose to the other. The second important part of this panel is the condition settings at the bottom. Transitions can be of two types, either conditional or unconditional. An unconditional transition will simply wait for a given time, called the exit time, before switching to its target state. This is typically very useful when you want some animation to play once, and then as soon as it's finished, your state machine should transition to another state. A conditional transition, on the other hand, uses one or more user-defined parameters or triggers to switch to the target state at specific moments. So rather than saying, wait for two seconds, you can say, wait for this parameter to be true, or wait for this trigger to be activated. 
And of course, those parameters and triggers can be accessed and set via c -sharp scripting, as we'll see very soon. But these parameters and triggers need to be created first, and this happens here, in the animator window. On the left, you see that you have a parameters tab, where you can add new variables that are global to the state machine and that can be of four types – floats, bools, ints or triggers. In our case, we want to create two parameters. One will be a boolean, called running, and the other a trigger called jump. You see that boolean parameters have a little check next to them, so you can decide that your parameter is initially true if you want by setting its value here. Triggers, well, they just have a little button that you can click to call them. And now we want to use these variables for our transitions. So first, let's finish this transition between the idle and run states. We want it to happen when running becomes true, so we can add a condition on this parameter and check for the true value. Since we have a condition, the exit time is now optional, and we should actually reset it to zero so that the transition starts as soon as the running parameter is set to true. We can leave a little bit of blend with something like 0.1 seconds of transition time. Of course, we also need to create the reverse transition. It's configured exactly the same, except that we check for the false value for the running parameter in our condition. If we play the scene again this time, we can manually go and check the running parameter to force the transitions. As soon as we click the checkbox, the transition occurs and the state changes. So our export is now running. And if we uncheck the parameter and set it back to false, we get our second transition and we go back to the idle state. For the jump state, we also want two transitions from and to the idle state. But this time, the first one will use our jump trigger, so we don't need to check for any value, and the second transition will be unconditional. We'll simply wait for the jump animation to complete and go back to our idle state afterwards. Once again, we can enter play mode and click the jump trigger to force the transition. Then, as soon as we've waited the right amount of time, the state machine automatically goes back to our idle state. A nice trick is that we can easily allow the transition to the jump state if we are in the run state too, just by using the any state block that's automatically created by Unity. This way, no matter which state we're currently in, if the jump trigger is called, then we'll go to the jump state. However, we still need to transition back to a specific state, so I'll arbitrarily keep the idle state for now. Okay, we now have a nice and clean animator controller that works really well. The only thing is that we obviously don't want to manually click the checkboxes and triggers. Instead, we want these parameters to be updated in our scripts, along with the position of the character depending on the player's input. In this video, I will focus on handling keyboard inputs, but of course you can easily extend this to other kinds of inputs, especially if you're a bit familiar with Unity's new input system. Um, by the way, if you'd like me to make a video on this new input system, make sure to tell me in the comments. Anyway, to handle this logic, let's create a C-sharp script called Player Controller and put it on our avatar game object. Then double click the script to open it. The first thing we need to do is create a reference to our animator. This will allow us to set the running parameter and call the jump trigger we just defined. Let's also create a reference to our rigid body because I'll use the basic physics system of Unity to handle my player movements. While I'm at it, I'll tell Unity that both those components are required. This way, I'm sure that any game object with my player controller script also has an animator and a rigid body. If I go back to my Unity editor, I see that the missing rigid body was automatically added on my game object. But I also need a box collider though, so that my object collides with the ground and doesn't just fall. Make sure that it's properly sized to match the avatar dimensions. All of this means that in my start function, I can use get component to fill both my references. Now, since I'm using Unity physics, I'm going to replace my update method with a fixed update. Usually, it's better to implement things in the fixed update when working with physics because it gives you deterministic and properly computed values. The first thing I'll code is my run feature. To do this, we'll need another private variable. A little running boolean flag that is initially false and that will record whether I'm already in the running state or not. I'll also need something to store the current value of the horizontal input axis. 
since in this video I only want my character to go left or right, I'll just look at this axis. It's defined by default in my project settings, in the Inputs tab, and assigned the arrow or the A and D keys. So what I want to do is get the current value of this input, which goes from 0 if no key is pressed, to minus 1 if the left key is pressed, or to plus 1 if the right key is pressed. If the value is not null, then I need to toggle on the running. I won't check exactly for a zero match though, because there can be some approximations with floats, so it's always better to check with a small threshold like this. In that case, I have to move my character thanks to its rigid body, and optionally to transition to the run state if my animator is not already using it. For the movement, because I'm in this side-scroller setting, I can simply set my rotation to look either left or right, depending on the input, and then move along my new forward vector with a given speed. This speed value is of course arbitrary, and you can tweak it to your liking, but I just find that 3 is nice for my setup. For the animator, I want to check if I'm already running. In that case, I don't need to do anything. Else, I'll set my running flag to true for next time, and also set the running parameter in my animator component. Finally, if I let go of the key, and the horizontal input goes back to zero, then if I was running, I should reset to the idle state. Meaning that I need to set my running flag back to false, as well as the parameter in the animator. All these setters will automatically call the right transitions, just like before when we checked and unchecked the parameter manually. So if I run my scene, I can now move left and right, and the position of my player updates, and it switches between the idle and run states. So that's really cool. I have both my movement and my animation. The second feature is the jump, and it's actually pretty easy to add. Back in our fixed update, at the very top, we can check for our rigid body velocity. If it's somewhat zero, again with a little threshold to be sure that we don't have issues because of approximations, then it means we're on the ground. So if we're pressing the jump input, which in my case is the spacebar, we'll want to call our jump trigger in the animator, and we also want to add some force to our rigid body. The jump force is another magic number in my script, here I found that 6 was nice, but it does take into account the mass of my rigid body, because I'm using the impulse force mode. So if you decide to change the mass of your rigid body, you'll definitely have to change this value to match. A final tweak we can make is back in our input's definition, for the horizontal axis, we should actually put the gravity to something way larger, like a thousand. This way, the input will be back to zero as soon as we release the key rather than decreasing gradually over time. And here we are! If we run the little scene again, we know stand still to begin with, then we can run left and right, and we can just jump from any of the other two states. When the jump animation is done, we go back to the idle state, and we are back to the running, idle, and jump routine. Just like before, you can check which state your animator controller is in, by having the animator window on the side, and selecting your player as you play along. Of course, you might need to do some adjustments on the start and end frames of your animations or on their speed. This can be changed by going either to the importer window and setting the clip start and end frames in the animation tab, or by going to the matching state in your animator and setting the speed value. And that's it for today, folks. In this tutorial, we saw how we can use some free resources from Adobe Mixamo to quickly set up a player character in a Unity scene with some basic movements and animations. We then used rigid bodies to move around along an axis and to jump. I really hope you enjoyed this video, as always it was a real blast to make, and if you have other ideas of Unity tutorials that you'd be interested in, feel free to share them in the comments. Also, if you want to see more of my content, you can support my work by liking and sharing this video, and by subscribing to the channel. Oh, and if you want to discover more of my videos, check out these two that I made recently. As usual, thanks a lot for watching, and see you soon for more videos on coding and games.